Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 24th of September and as we every day present to you very important topics in news, we are also presenting you today with three very important topics in news. The first topic which we are going to cover today is the carbon border tax. This tax is levied by the European Union on the products which the European Union is importing from other countries. Let's suppose India is exporting or European Union is importing those products from India. So it is kind of an import duty which EU will levy. And what would be the basis or what, we, what would be the logic since the word carbon is there? Those products being exported by India to EU, in India while manufacturing those products, whatever emissions have been done, if those emissions are high, then EU will be levying that carbon border tax. So this is actually becoming a bone of contention between developing countries like India and EU because it restricts India's exports to EU or it makes India's products being exported to EU less competitive. Not only India but yes Brazil, China, South Africa all have you know protested against this tax levied by EU. So we look into the details of this. Next is critical information infrastructure. This was talked about by the G20 leaders in this G20 summit. In the New Delhi declaration there was this heading of terrorism and in that it was being talked. What is critical information infrastructure? Actually any infrastructure on which the, social, the society, the economy and the security of the country depends and you know protection, resilience of that infrastructure is very very important. That particular infrastructure obviously that infrastructure should be having linked with some digital infrastructure like for example electricity grid is an infrastructure which is very much important for our economy, for our security, for our society. So overall it is a very essential infrastructure for any country. But that electricity grid is being linked with you know a software, computers are there, you click a button electricity starts flowing. Likewise any infrastructure in the present day world has been linked with you know, digital space. That is why that infrastructure is critical infrastructure electricity grid. But since it is being linked with or it is being run by digital systems then it is called as critical information infrastructure. How important this is? What are the various infrastructures in India which have been labeled as CII? We all will be discussing this in this particular topic. There, are, there were various attacks in the past on the electricity grids of India. Then there were various guidelines issued by the government. We will be discussing about those guidelines also over here. So this in all is a very important topic for GS3 that is internal security point of view. And finally the last topic which we are going to cover today is e-Sanjeevani. e-Sanjeevani is nothing but a telemedicine application developed by India during the COVID years. What is telemedicine? Actually a doctor sitting at a distant place being able to examine you and you are not there means online examination and this became quite popular during the COVID years because we were locked down. So this medicine, this telemedicine app actually did the role. Now this is getting more and more popular among the Indians. So we look at e Sanjeevni what it is, it has two legs, one is doctor to doctor consultation, one is doctor to patient consultation. So both of these legs we will be looking at and yes it is also part of the digital public infrastructure of the government of India. The carbon border tax. Just imagine a government levying a tax on those products which are not manufactured over there but are being imported. It is quite natural import duties every government levies. But what if that import duty is being levied on the basis of emissions done by 
those countries who are manufacturing it in their own countries. And then that product becomes expensive by levying these carbon border tax when it enters that particular entity which is levying that tax. The entity which is levying carbon border tax is European Union. And you know products being imported by European Union, they face import duties. Why? Because they while being manufactured in those in their respective you know host countries have done a lot of emissions. So those emissions are not being done in U European Union per se. Those emissions are being done in that country only, but European Union is levying tax on the products coming to its market. Will it not make the products being exported by those countries less competitive in European Union's market? Definitely it will be. European Union, which is largely a conglomeration of developed countries, levying taxes on imports coming from developing countries also raises this debate of developed versus developing with respect to climate change. Because the developing countries say that the climate change or global warming of today is actually a result of historical emissions done by the developed countries of today. Most of them are here in EU. And now EU is only levying this tax. So that is becoming a major bone of contention between the developing countries exporting products to European Union markets. That has to be dealt with in a more justifiable way. So let us see. The basic group comprising India, China, Brazil and South Africa. Brazil, South Africa, India, China. It is called as basic but yes AS is actually South Africa. Recently said in a statement that unilateral measures and discriminatory practices such as carbon border taxes. It is a unilateral measure because European Union by itself has done it. It could result in market distortion and aggravate the trust deficit among parties. It must be avoided. It will develop trust deficit among the parties who are exporting products to European Union. And hence that should be avoided. What is carbon border adjustment tax? Actually it is called this. The technical name is this carbon border adjustment tax. Duty on imports it is. Let's suppose India one of this basic countries exporting cement to European Union. Now European Union will say how much emissions are done by India while manufacturing this cement. If the emissions are above the set limit by European Union, then European Union will levy this carbon border adjustment tax on the cement, which will increase the price of the cement and which will make it less competitive. So that is why these countries are opposing this tax. The carbon border tax involves imposing an import duty on a product manufactured in a country with more lax climate rules than one buying it. So here are the climate rules are more stringent. They can afford to be stringent because they are developed. Here the climate rules cannot be so stringent because if we make the climate rules stringent, it will be a hindrance in the development of these developing countries. Means earlier also they were not allowed to develop because these countries were like the colonies. And now also EU is imposing such kind of policies which is hindering the development of these countries. And EU is developed. So that is why these countries, the developing countries are posing, I would say, protests against this. Now what is EU stand versus the basic groups stand? We should know this as well. The EU has proposed a policy carbon border adjustment mechanism to tax products such as cement and steel because these are extremely carbon intensive products and this is going to happen with effective from 2026. EU claimed that the tax will benefit the environment and provide a level playing field to the companies those who are you know following the norms. Whereas what is the basic group stand? They say it puts the burden of climate compliance on the developing countries. Whereas it should not be there on the developing countries, Com climate compliance burden should be on the developed countries because it is because of them 
climate change is happening not because of us then they have done much less to pollute the environment and yet are often more vulnerable to effects of climate change so we are facing the music also means we are more vulnerable to effects of climate change we have to tackle those all those things also and now these kind of restrictive policies also these kind of restrictive policies which are unilateral in nature means eu by itself has done it it did not consult with any of other groups or any other countries so this actually is a problem it is being discussed it is being deliberated it is being picked up on various multilateral forums it was also talked about in the g20 summit but at length we did not go about it but yes as aspirants we should know what this mechanism is because upsc at times poses such kind of questions critical information infrastructure for the time being i delete the word information from here i just say critical infrastructure what does critical infrastructure mean that infrastructure of a country whose i would say smooth functioning is very much essential for the economy of that country for the defense and security of that country for the societal well being of that country that is critical information critical infrastructure now if i add information in between critical information infrastructure it simply means that critical infrastructure which i just talked about is linked with some information technology mechanism or has been digitized coming back to critical infrastructure example is let's suppose the electricity distribution system that is electricity grid and now that electricity grid is being linked to some digital software from where it will be operated to make the functioning of it more smooth to assess the losses during transmission all this we have to digitize it and it makes you know the job easy life easy so this is actually what is happening in industry 4.0 the physical systems are being linked with the digital systems another example banking earlier banking was very i would say it it involved physical processes but now transfer of money everything has been digitized so that is also a critical information infrastructure one remarkable feature of critical information infrastructure is that it is interlinked like let's suppose uh, you know electricity grid which is digitized is attacked by some hackers and which cripples the supply of electricity in the entire country now this will have an impact on almost all the sectors it will have an impact on banking it will have an impact on defense security everywhere it will be impacting moreover it will have an impact on the overall economy so this critical information infrastructure to save this is very very important the government of india has listed various sectors as part of critical information infrastructure and they are actually under the stringent watch of the government that these should not be attacked these should be made more resilient more robust so that you know if they get attacked then it will impact many other sectors also so let us look into it what critical information infrastructure actually means is a communications or information service whose availability reliability and resilience are essential to the functioning of a modern economy national security and other essential social values so it is very much important and essential one remarkable features of the cii's is that they are interconnected and interdependent failure of one cii can impact the other cii can get it will impact so that is i would say it it this interconnectedness makes it more complex the various cii's listed in india defense space banking and finance power generation and distribution transport since this fast tag has come into picture so this transport has also been digitized public health you know there are portals like ayushman health portal everything is there 
then pub, uh, water supply, communication, sensitive government organizations, law enforcement agencies, critical manufacturing, e-governance, census and NPR and the systems of Aadhaar have also been labeled as CII directly. This Aadhaar portal actually entails all the personal information of the residents here in India. The keyword is residents means non-citizens can also have an Aadhaar card. All these are CIIs being listed by the government of India in India. Effects of cyber attacks on CII, damage or destruction of CII that is quite simple. Then disruption or degradation of services because since it is interlinked with each other. So not only the services in that domain which is attacked will be impacted but in other areas also it will be impacted. Loss of sensitive strategic information. Let's suppose, you know, we have this defense. If the digital space of defense is attacked by, you know, the attackers, then, you know, there will be loss of sensitive strategic information. And that is why very recently, I think last month, uh, a new operating system has been adopted by Ministry of Defense that is called as Maya OS, Maya Operating System. It has been indigenously developed. Now the computers and laptops over there are operating on this system. Now operating system is different. Nobody has access to it. Windows it is not being operated upon or Mac OS it is not being operated upon. So it becomes difficult for the attackers to attack. It is completely insulated. So just an example about Maya OS and how we are safeguarding our critical information infrastructure. Then cascading effect. Cascading effect means if one is impacted, many others can be impacted because they are interconnected with each other. So this is the effect of cyber attacks on CII. Now guidelines for security in power sector. Power sector is one such sector which is frequently attacked or the most attacked I would say. Because it is I would say the one of the most crucial CIIs. Most critical of the critical information infrastructure it is because if power is disrupted then every other sector will be impacted. So there was an attack allegedly by the Chinese hackers and you know Mumbai power grid was attacked. But after that you know government rolled out some guidelines and this was not the first time any electricity grid in India was being attacked. It had been there had been many other attacks in the past also. So the guidelines have been framed by Central Electricity Authority, first of all, and the Central Electricity Authority has this, you know, authority to form rules under the provisions of Section 310 of Cyber Security in the Central Electricity Authority's Technical Standards for Connectivity to the Grid. Now these are applicable to all responsible entities, including power generation, who are generating the power, distributing the powers and other stakeholders in that electricity generation and distribution system. These have to be followed by all. Now what are the guidelines? First is procurement from trusted source. Now the hardware for which we are dependent upon China to be very frank. That procurement should be done from trusted source and that is why Make in India or Atma Nirbhar Bharat becomes important. We have to develop our own capacity in generating or manufacturing those hardwares so that they are safe because what if these hardwares are inherently prone to cyber attacks coming from China and prone to Chinese cyber attacks only. It can be a possibility. So procurement should be done from trusted sources first. Second appointment of a chief information security officer CISO at each responsible entity. and setting up of an information security division headed by the CISO. What will be the job of CISO? To identify and report the threats. To whom? To CERT that is Computer Emergency Response Team India within 24 hours. Now CERT is basically a monitoring committee which is monitoring real time threats in India. So any security officer gets 
you know this hint of an attack or suspicion of an attack should be reported immediately that security officer should be so vigilant and you know we cannot actually ignore this at all or we cannot remain relaxed in this this is something which is very critical for any countries or any economies functioning guidelines for electricity department are there but there is a need for guidelines in other sectors also other sectors like telecom because then that is also i would say a sector which is impacted one and all means a mobile phone is being used by almost all the people there is very high i would say uh, tele density in the country nuclear power generation actually in 2019 kodankulam nuclear power plant was under a cyber attack now just imagine the cyber attackers they do uncontrolled fission reaction in a nuclear reactor which can lead to leakage of radiations and damage the nearby areas it can happen so the, there also we need and especially when the kodankulam nuclear power plant was under attack we came to know about it and the i would think the the sad part is that we came to know about that attack 6 months after the attack was been done so that there also we need to create more and more vigilance then the logistics sector this is also getting digitized like fast tag is there so and and you know we are, we are talking about building the national logistics policy in which digitization has been at the core that also has to be you know under the scanner or i would say under i would say stringent watch of the government because it is logistics if it is hampered it will definitely have a long lasting impact on our economic development or economic activities in our country so all in all if we see this the critical information infrastructure is very very critical or very very important for any country to safeguard and when we have you know neighboring countries like pakistan and china we need to be more and more aware apart from it this is a cyber attack cyber attack can be done from anywhere cyber attack can be of any nature because the technology is evolving day by day we need to be one step ahead of the attackers you don't know what kind of technology or what kind of attack they bring so our responses to these kind of attacks should be robust thankfully india's responses india's cyber security i would say real is is quite robust in this index the global cyber security index india is ranked 10th the last year's index i'm talking about amongst i would say 150 or 160 countries so which clearly signifies that you know our strength over there and you know one such index a global index in which india finally is performing well because else we've seen many indexes where india's rank is above 100 only this is the e sanjeevani now just imagine a situation where you are locked up in your houses but you need the support of a doctor and you cannot go outside because there are restrictions for movement what will you do in this case either call up your family doctor if you don't have a family doctor then you'll you know just bear the consequences of that illness the middle class upper middle class upper class these people have family doctors but this kind of concept is not there in the lower class how do they deal with it the government came up with a noble solution that was e sanjeevani during the covid years sitting in the four walls of your house you can do a tele consultation with a doctor sitting at a distant place another aspect of e sanjeevani is now you are there in the rural areas you go to a doctor over there the doctor it can only treat for primary healthcare services not secondary or tertiary let's suppose you have developed a complex problem let's suppose a uh, kidney stone is there or let's suppose uh, uh, some some symptoms of a uh, tumor or cancer are there so that doctor sitting in the rural areas will not be able to tackle it properly because he does not have the expertise so what he can do he can consult with the other doctor sitting in urban areas and then you know 
that doctor to doctor conversation can definitely give some solution to that person in the rural areas. So e-Sanjeevani, the telemedicine app of the government of India developed indigenously has two aspects. One is doctor to patient in which the patients can directly consult with the doctors and the second aspect is doctor to doctor for some specialized treatments and this can actually be the game changer for providing healthcare services in the far flung rural areas where a physical infrastructure for creating a physical infrastructure deploying doctors and healthcare staff over there is difficult so this e sanjeevani can do the task it is another example of our digital public infrastructure so let us get into this what it is we'll see a union health minister recently informed the Rajya Sabha that the center's telemedicine application e sanjeevani has completed 14 crore 17 lakh 81,384 teleconsultations, which is a substantial feat in itself. This is more than the population of many countries in the world. About e Sanjeevni, if I talk about, it is a cloud-based integrated telemedicine solution of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Telemedicine Hub provides both doctor to doctor and doctor to patient telecommunication two aspects it is having. It is being designed, developed, deployed and maintained by the Center for Development and Advanced Computing that is CDAC Mohali. So it is a government entity which is actually responsible for developing it and maintaining it, deploying it also. Another I would say example of a digital progress or digital I would say strength of the country. Now, two modes of e-Sanjeevani. First is e-Sanjeevani Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Center. It is actually doctor to doctor telemedicine. Now, what is Health and Wellness Center? We will we'll see. It is actually implemented at all Health and Wellness Centers in the country under the Ayushman Bharat scheme of Government of India. Health and Wellness Centers actually go for treatment of primary health care. They are there in the rural areas or semi-urban areas. There, this is being implemented. Let's suppose this is a state. Now in this state, there is this district. There is this district. There is this district. These are all districts in that state. Okay. Now in that district, there are multiple, I would say, health and wellness centers. These dots are health and wellness centers. And here there are health and wellness centers. Okay. Now people come to these health and wellness centers and they say that they have developed a complex problem like kidney stone for example and this health and wellness center is not capable of treating kidney stones or even prescribing medicines for that. So the doctor over here in the health and wellness center they will be consulting or they will, con they, this is let's suppose the western zone of districts and the eastern zone. So in a western zone of districts there will be some person who will be sitting and catering to the health and wellness center of all the districts over here in this particular zone of that particular district. So here in that I would say center the doctor over here in this health and wellness center will consult this particular doctor sitting over here in the center and you know prescribe medicines for this particular person. So there will be one such hub over here there will be another hub over here which will be connected to various health and wellness centers in the districts in the eastern zone. This model where a person who is there at the hub giving prescriptions or supporting all the health and wellness centers in the region is called as hub and spoke model because these are the spokes, the lines which I drew. And the hub is at the center where that specialist is sitting. So it operates on the hub and spoke model wherein the Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Centers are set up at the state level which is connected with the hub comprising MBBS specialty, super specialty doctors at the zonal level. It was rolled out in 2019. I would say this particular leg of e Sanjeevni before COVID it was rolled out because Ayushman Bharat was there into picture at that time. E Sanjeevani OPD 
it is the patient to doctor remote consultation services rolled out in 2020 during the first lockdown period so actually the first aspect was rolled out earlier doctor to doctor connecting health and wellness centers to the zonal centers where the specialists were staying and government's innovation actually said that if we are doing doctor to doctor we can do directly patient to doctor also so that was the second aspect of e sanjeevni which was rolled out and it was very much beneficial in the first lockdown imposed outpatient departments opds were carried out means opds are general consultations which we do for the with the doctors and we could do it on this telemedicine app called as e sanjeevni so it enables people to get outpatient services in the confines of their homes and now the minister for health has recently said that we have completed 14 crore 17 lakh 81384 teleconsultations on this e sanjeevni app isn't it amazing it is but yes people need to be more and more aware about this especially that digital uh, literacy or i would say the digital gap should also be reduced then only people in the far flung rural areas having access to smartphones will be able to do it the smartphones people are having access to more and more smartphones these days there are more than 85 crore smartphone users in the country so they can make their smartphones use for beneficial purposes like healthcare and this is it from today's session i will be meeting you tomorrow with some more important topics and you know we will be discussing them at length making them relevant for prelims as well as mains point of view till then guys keep studying keep reading keep writing and most importantly keep revising jai hind